BBC News with Sue Montgomery. New Year celebrations are taking place across Western Europe and Africa. Crowds are in the streets of capitals from Warsaw and Stockholm in the east to Brussels, Paris, Madrid and also London and Edinburgh, where midnight struck an hour ago. Here's Alexandra Mackenzie. Happy Hogmanay from Edinburgh. I think everyone is having fun. This is the first Hogmanay Street party in Edinburgh for three years because of the coronavirus pandemic. And not only do we have the street party, we're on Princess Street, right beside Edinburgh Castle. 30,000 people are lining Princess Street tonight from all around the world. I've spoken to people from Sudan, from Spain, from America, here in Edinburgh. It's been a bit wet and a bit cold, but that hasn't put anyone off. There have also been celebrations in the Middle East and Asia. In Dubai, over 600 drones were used in a spectacular light display. As midnight struck and New Year's Eve in Ukraine, there were reports of more Russian missile explosions. The head of the Ukrainian armed forces said air defences had shot down 12 of 20 cruise missiles. In Russia, President Putin delivered his New Year address on state TV, which showed him telling soldiers that historical rightness was on their side. Defense of the homeland is our sacred duty to our ancestors and successors. Moral, historical right is on our side. The outgoing year has brought about cardinal changes for Russia and the whole world. It was filled with worries, anxieties and trials. But our multinational people, as in our difficult periods of Russian history, have displayed courage and dignity. Reports are emerging from eastern Mali of intense fighting between rival Islamist groups. A long-running insurgency has been taking place for over a decade. More details from David Bamford. The Al-Qaeda faction, operating in the Sahel countries of North and West Africa, issued a statement saying its fighters have been battling Islamic State militants in eastern Mali for a month. Al-Qaeda says it killed more than a hundred ultra-extremists as it describes the IS fighters. It says the main battles have been taking place near Tessit in the Menaka region. Videos of the fighting have been published online by both groups. The Malian army has been fighting both Islamist factions for some years, now helped by Russian mercenaries of the Wagner group. French forces withdrew from Mali in November because of disagreements with Mali's military government. World News from the BBC. President Biden is among world leaders who've paid tribute to Pope Benedict XVI, who died on New Year's Eve at the age of 95. Luis Inácio Lula da Silva, the president-elect of Brazil, the country with the world's highest Catholic population, expressed his sadness at Benedict's death. Pope Benedict will lie in state in the Vatican from Monday. His funeral will take place on Thursday, with Pope Francis leading the service. Czechs and Slovaks are marking the 30th anniversary of the dissolution of Czechoslovakia into two independent states. Rob Cameron reports. Today, few Czechs and Slovaks yearn for their common state, forged in the ashes of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, subject to Nazi occupation and communist dictatorship, Czechoslovakia lasted barely three years after the return of democracy in 1989. Not many mourn it because there's little reason to. Both are members of the EU. Personal, business and cultural ties remain strong. Croatia is beginning the new year with a new currency, ditching its own money, the kuna, and adopting the euro. The finance minister became the first customer in the country to withdraw euros from a cash machine. Croatia is also joining the EU's Schengen area, allowing travel to neighbouring countries without border checks. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has described a vote by the UN General Assembly to seek a legal opinion on Israel's occupation of Palestinian territories as despicable. He said the Jewish people were not occupiers on their own land. Earlier, the Palestinian authorities welcomed the move by UN members to seek a ruling from the International Court of Justice. A spokesperson for the Palestinian president, Mahmoud Abbas, said the time had come for Israel to be subject to the law. BBC News.